Hello, my fruity family. What's up? My name is Jeanette, and today I'm coming to you from the Woodstock Fruit Festivals page, and I'm going to be talking with one of our favorite, favorite people, Miss Karen Ramsey. I love her so much. She's a big part of the Woodstock Fruit Festival every single year. We're going to talk to her about her experience at the festival, what it's been like for her, how many times she's gone, about her healthy journey, and you guys sent me some great questions as well. What's up, Richard? What's up, boo? What's up, Richard? Richard's another person from the Woodstock Fruit Festival, which we love so much. We love Richard. And um, so, yeah, I got some great questions from you guys for Karen. I'm going to ask her those first, and then we'll get into the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Yes, you made it on time. Yes, everybody's here. Thank you guys for being here. I'm going to bring Karen in. Hold on. You're not Karen. Laura. <laughs> Laura wants to come in. We're interviewing Karen. Laura, we got to set up an interview with you because Laura's also, she's also an amazing attendee from the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So let me request Karen. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Mm, how do I do this? Okay. Let me and I'm excited. I love Karen so much. She keeps it real. She's been raw vegan for 28 years, you guys. Oh, what's up, Karen? Hi, Jeanette. How are you? Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, you're amazing. Let me I'm just sorry. I, I didn't realize that you had thought it was 3.30 because we did say 3.30 or 4. So That was me. That was me. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. But thank you so much. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I want to ask you so many things, but I want to start with the questions from our beautiful, amazing viewers. Okay? And so... I got so many questions for you, and I just want to start with um, the first one is, so we have a, a beautiful, amazing vegan queen who is having difficulty with raising her daughter. So her ex-husband disagrees with, that, with her on her dietary choices, right? And so she wants to know, what is the ideal diet, in your opinion, Karen, for a toddler? Because her ex-husband believes that the, their baby needs eggs and cheese and yogurt and a variety of foods, and she believes that she doesn't. So what is your view as someone who raised your kids raw vegan? Okay, well, um, I raised my kids raw vegan. Um, my son had asthma and chronic ear infections the first three years of his life, and we were vegan already. So vegan itself wasn't enough. Um, 1994... We went to raw vegan, and my son's asthma and ear infections healed in about 10 to 11 months and never came back. So that already for me was a sign that a healthy, whole foods, fresh foods, vegan lifestyle is very appropriate for kids. Um, eggs, dairy, um, all animal foods are extremely acidic and mucus forming in the body. And our, that's why our kids get sick, um, because they have too much mucus in their bodies. And when you go on to a whole foods vegan diet, or even better, a raw vegan diet, children don't get sick anymore. I just wanted my kids to be healthy. And I just see children out there sick all the time. They're sick with asthma, with allergies, with ear infections, with colds, with flus, with like you know, it's not fair. We as parents, we really have to be a model. We have to be a role model for our kids. We have to only have the foods in the house that are fruits and veggies. And then, you know, as they get a little older, they can have more in the way of nuts and seeds. But um, fruit is the first food. Yeah. Not, kids not love like fruit. Cereal. Kids love fruit, right, Karen? They love, they adore fruit. They adore fruit. Rice cereals, no. Yeah, it's so normal to be to be sick as a kid. Isn't that weird? It's normal. I had lots of ear infections, and I'm sure you you did too, and yeah. lots of health issues. And so, yeah, to the beautiful viewer that asked that, there you go, Karen. I'm sure you have helped so many people, hundreds of thousands of people, to raise their kids in a healthy way that does not include any animal products. Right. That's right. And I wrote about my family story and just about raising kids in general on vegan and raw foods in my book, Creating Healthy Children Through Attachment, Parenting, and Raw Foods. 
And that, and that book is on my website. So if your husband is giving you a hard time and he wants information, he can go to superhealthychildren.com and get everything that he needs right there. Uh, you know, I'm an educator. I have my master's degree from New York University. I, you know, I'm a speech pathologist. I've, I have a teacher's degree. I understand children. I understand how to raise children. Um, I've seen both sides. I myself was a, was a very unhealthy kid. I was on maintenance an antibiotics all the time growing up. And I didn't want that for my children. So yeah. you just have to um, educate. You have to educate. And if your husband isn't interested and doesn't want to see anything, then he doesn't understand and he's not willing to even find out what, what you already know. Yeah, I'll leave the links below. Uh, we'll put this on YouTube, Karen, and I'll leave the links below to your book, which is so important for parents because, you know, to have that proof that, yes, this is the right thing to do, to feed your kids fresh, ripe, juicy, delicious fruit and veggies, the healthiest stuff on earth, you know? And But, you know, society's so backwards. I also was, like, forced to eat eggs and milk and cheese and all these foods that were supposed to help me grow into a healthy human. But next question. <laughs> yeah. Karen, they want to know, our friend Little Drops of Happiness for All, this is a cute name, they want to know, what's your favorite salad, Karen? Favorite salad. My favorite salad. I mean, my salads are different every single day. I'm always adding new things to my salads. I make new delicious dressings. Um, what would my favorite be? Well, I love romaine lettuce. That's my favorite lettuce. So I ha if I have to choose among lettuces, that would be it. Um, I love sunflower greens. Mm. So I put loads of sunflower greens on. Um, like the sprouts, yeah? Sunflower sprouts, yes. yes. I just love those. They're just loaded with very high quality protein and calcium and just the mineral. They kind. taste so good. And they taste delicious. So I love those with romaine lettuce. Today, um, I have something that I really love that I'm going to put on my salad. And that's it. I just got this beautiful pomegranate. So I'm going to take out the pomegranate seeds, put them all over my salad. I have um, a delicious heirloom tomato. I'm going to chop that up. Um, what else am I going to put on my salad? Like that already has some of my favorite things, but I will add to that and maybe put on some uh, yellow pepper that I have. I'll put some chopped yellow pepper. And every day I put different ingredients so that I'm always having variety. Like some people say to me, oh, Karen, like you have no variety in what you eat. And those same people are eating ham and cheese and pizza every day. And I am getting so much variety from all my different fruits and vegetables year round. Even in the winter, I'm getting variety. Like right now, I, I don't get persimmons in the summer. I am eating persimmon. I am just enjoying them so much. It's like orange jello on the inside. Yeah. And yeah. I know that you, Jeanette, you're like the queen of fruit. So I'm sure that people know about these different fruits through all of your different um, lives, showing them in the stores what you buy, which the I love. I loved your videos. Thank you, Boo. The persimmons, the mangoes of the winter. Woo. Absolutely. What is, Karen, what's one of your favorite go-to dressings people want to know? Um, I love, I have a creamy pistachio dressing. Mm. So I like, um, I really love like raw unsalted pistachios have a really pure, delicious taste on their own. So I'll take like um, maybe a quarter to a third of a cup, no more than that. And um, I'll soak them for a few hours, maybe like, well, maybe like five hours. And then I'll pour the water out, rinse them and blend them up with a couple stalks of celery, the juice of a large orange, and the juice of a large lime. And it's like a creamy green goddess. Oh my gosh, I've never used pistachios in a dressing. Yeah. 
And so I've always loved pistachios in the past, but I used to like overeat them. I'd sit there and just eat a whole bag of pistachios. Even though I had to take off the shell, I would just overeat on them. And so I stopped that a long time ago. But then I realized how much I loved the taste. So this dressing really satisfies that craving without me overeating on them. Yeah, that's a question I have. Um, so somebody asked, don't you have a key lime pie? Yes, she does. She made it at Woodstock Fruit Festival this year for us. Yeah, yeah. So good. So rich in flavor. That's what I love about raw foods. It's so rich and flavorful. That's right. Incredible. If anybody wants the recipe, you can just email me. I'll send it to you. Look at that, guys. What's your, uh, what's your email, Karen? It's uh, Karen, K-A-R-E-N, at feel fabulous with food.com because you want to feel fabulous with what you eat that's why i chose that title because it's just whatever you put in your body you want to feel great and if you're eating all this stuff that has no fiber like animal food and processed food no fiber so you want to eat the foods that have the fiber the whole plants and then you want to go even further and have the plants that have their molecular structure intact. And that's the rich, raw living plant foods. And that's where we get the most benefit. And that's why, I mean, I've been working as a health coach since 1998. And all I see is miracles. And that's why I love doing this. Like tw I've been raw vegan for 28 years and coaching for 24 years. And all I see are beautiful stories. And beautiful and, people. And yeah. beautiful people. And I love that. And that's what keeps me passionate and motivated and knowing that this is the right path. And as I get older, um, because when I started this, I was like 40. When I started raw food, I was vegan before that, but not al always eating healthfully vegan. But I've been raw vegan since 1994. And people ask me, like, aren't you craving a lot of, you know, cooked and processed stuff? Um, a lot of times people are eating things that I used to love, like pastas and breads. I used to live on those. I don't crave them at all anymore. Like, I just love the way I eat. The fruits, the veggies, small amounts of nuts and seeds sprouts i love the way i eat yeah can you tell us a lot of people ask me about like the switch of how i stopped eating cooked food because you know like you just said you loved pasta you loved cookies and candies and all those things and so how did you decide to go from a you know vegan junk food vegan to be a whole foods healthy raw vegan how did you make that switch what was it for you you know what? When you have kids who are sick, mm. you don't want your kids to be sick. And that's why I was so passionate about getting the word out about that. And for many years, all I did was talk about raising healthy kids with raw vegan food. And what happened was that when I had my second child, he, the first three years of his life, he was very sick with asthma and chronic ear infections. Um, and some of you out there may know my son, Marco, Marco Ramsey. He now lives in Costa Rica. He's a permaculture farmer. He has a master's degree in holistic nutrition and human performance. And he has a retreat in Costa Rica, a vegan and raw food retreat called El Sanctuario de la Salud. So I'm very, very proud of, of who he is. And he's also but, just a really wonderful person. He's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. He always has a smile. Always. Always. Yeah. 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 And so he was a really sick baby. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why, because a lot of people, um, you know, realize that taking out dairy can very often turn around asthma but we didn't have dairy in there anymore. Because when I went vegan in 1989, that was um, four years, uh, five years before I went raw vegan, I had taken out the dairy and the eggs, which was the last thing 
that, you know, I, I had, was eating a lot of dairy before I went vegan in 1989. I was really addicted to cheddar cheese and cheese doodles yeah. for many years. Those are my favorite foods. I used to binge on cheese doodles. Yeah. <laughs> I love them, but uh, they didn't serve me. And I don't know if my system was still clogged up when I had my child. I don't know. But he was sick those early years, and I knew that I needed to make even more changes. And that's why in 1994, I went raw vegan, and I did it, I did it for my kids. As soon as I did, my son started clearing up, and the doctors told me he was going to be with an inhaler and steroids for the rest of his life. And I was like, no way. And I'm not giving him steroids. And I just decided to have my way. And I did, I found the way. One of my yoga teachers once said to me that there's a solution for everything. And I believed her and I felt in control with that statement. And so I kept on looking for solutions. I didn't want to believe that I had to go down this really negative road and do something to my child. Like he was already very athletic. Um, even at an early age, he was showing like great signs of athleticism. And the doctors were telling me that on the inhaler and with the steroids and everything, he wasn't going to be able to run. And he was wheezing every night and we were in the bathroom, in the shower at night for respiration. And this was just the biggest change. And that was my motivator. So just understanding that health comes from healthy living. So whether it's your kids or your friends or your spouse, you're going to have much better health when you take out all of the acidic foods and when you go to a more alkaline state. When your blood is more in an alkaline state with, ri with ripe raw fruits and leafy greens and veggies, uh, those are the key because those are alkaline. And when I learned that, it turned on a, a light switch. And I never, I never went back. 28 years now raw vegan, and I never went back. And I love it, and I love talking about it. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I, I've seen thousands of people heal from diabetes, from thyroid issues, uh, lose weight, um, I had severe cystic acne for over 25 years. I have like really horrific before pictures. Um, most of the time I wouldn't even take pictures. So I don't have too many of them. Like I'm like always amazed by some of my friends in the raw vegan movement who have all these before pictures. I wouldn't take pictures. Same, Karen. I feel like we're the same person. Same. I would not let anybody take a photo with me, especially without makeup on. I put a lot of makeup on because I didn't know I was going to be changing the world on social media one day, you know? <laughs> That's right. I didn't predict it either. So but, um, that many pictures, um, you know, and like you, when I did, I do have some that are more distant where you can't see me close up, but I like put loads of makeup on. If we had those before photos, we could take over the world, Karen. But, <laughs> um, but and now speaking of you sharing, and this is your passion in life, it's very obvious when um, you meet, when I meet you in person, like this is your passion. And I love that. I love people that are doing what they were born to do, which is inspire the world, you know? And we all have, we all have things to teach others. And what you do at Woodstock is every year you come to Woodstock Fruit Festival and you help teach people exactly how to live, how to take care of this body that we don't know what to do with, right? We're not given a user manual for it. And also it's so powerful what you do because you teach mothers and fathers how to raise their kids, okay? And so I wanted to know, first of all, uh, how was Woodstock for you this year? And could you tell us some of the talks you did at Woodstock in uh, 2022? Yeah. Oh, when I even hear you say that, I get teary because, um, I, you know, Woodstock is like my highlight every year. It's my highlight all year. Even when everything was opening up, opened up before COVID and I was 
going all over the world speaking, which I don't do as much now. Um, but even then, I just every year, Woodstock was my, has always been my highlight of the year. Because when I think of Woodstock, I think of Utopia. I think of a place where, like, I wish everybody could live in that kind of ideal world where we have wonderful community, where we have the freshest, healthiest food and variety, like great variety to choose from, um, where we have educators who understand um, fitness, and thank you so much for all the fitness that you were doing at the festival. <laughs> you were you were too busy to come work out. I with was me, too but... busy. I wanted to come to your watermelon workshops. Yeah. Next time. Next, next time. time. Next time. Um, but I, it's just you know the scenery, everything, and I know because I know the people who run Woodstock are going to create a whole new place that's going to be equally as great. So I'm not even concerned about that. Um, but just the environment and just being with like-minded people who just understand that for ourselves, for our health, for the animals, for the planet, that we need to make these changes to a plant-powered and raw food lifestyle in order to have the happiness and the longevity. Now, some people say to me, Karen, like, what do you think? You're going to live forever? And I tell them, no, of course not. I understand that, you know, I'm on this planet just for a certain time. However, while I'm here, I want it to be my highest quality life. And that's why I, what I have. And that's why I've gone into my menopause years feeling amazing absolutely amazing and I don't have the typical symptoms of what many of my friends and a lot of my clients who come to me during their menopause years and are really concerned about their health and their and their future and we don't have to have those things so that's what Woodstock brings for me number one um, and then the talks that I did at Woodstock this year I did a talk uh, specifically on the skin and healing the skin, which is one of my favorite talks because that's my story. Uh, my story was, you know, 20, it was about 27 years of severe cystic acne all over my face and back. And I'm not even talking about acne. I'm talking about lumps all over my face. It was really bad. And I was on so many medications and the doctors told me that it had, you know, the dermatologists all told me it had nothing to do with what I was eating. They all told me it was genetic. And what happened in 1989 when I went vegan? My skin healed in three months after 20, like 27 years. So that was very upsetting. And I really wanted to do that workshop. Uh, that was one that I did. And I also did one on mental and neurological health uh, because in addition to my health coaching, I've all also been a speech and language pathologist for 43 years. Um, and the last 20 of those years was working with children with autism. And so my most recent book is on healing and preventing autism through natural solutions that work. And raw food, has helped many kids with autism, even adults. So I did a talk on that. And I also brought in a young woman, a 26 year old woman who was at the festival, who grew up with autism. I wrote about her in my book. And I didn't think that adults could turn around their symptoms of autism but she's proving me wrong. <laughs> she's proving that the solutions that I have in the book can very well turn around the symptoms of autism at any age. And so that's another passionate topic that I talked about at the festival. Um, I also give my 28 tips um, that I wish I knew 
when I started a raw vegan lifestyle 28 years ago. Yeah, every year you add one. <laughs> every year I add another tip. I really wanted to go to that, Karen. Could you just tell us a few of them? I really, really wanted to go. Sure. Um, so at the very beginning, when I first started 28 years ago, I, I thought that just going raw was enough. Um, but I didn't realize that a lot of the things that claim to be raw are not raw. Like oils. I was eating a lot of oils. I didn't realize that oil wasn't raw or whole. Or it's healthy. Processed food and it's unhealthy. And people are always shocked. You know, they're like, oh my God, olive oil. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yep, olive oil too. And when you heat it, it turns into a trans fat. Mm -hmm. And that's carcinogenic. So, um, so that's one of my tips um, is really understanding what healthy raw food actually is. Um, another mistake that I made was, and um, you know, a lot of people are confused by the word fruitarian. They think that fruitarians only eat fruit, but I know people who call themselves fruitarian and they don't only eat fruit. They eat a lot of leafy green. Um, when I first, you know, after I realized that the oils were harmful and some of the other things that are called raw that are not really raw, I went into a long phase of just only eating fruit for a long time. And I started having a mineral deficiency. Um, one of the signs, just one of those signs, what I, was that I was getting cracks on the sides of my mouth. And they were like blistered cracks and I couldn't figure it out. And the doctors just wanted to give me medications. And um, I started eating more leafy greens. And after only two weeks, those sores went away and they never came back. So I know pretty clearly that that was a mineral deficiency. I was also losing like huge clumps of hair. And my kids were saying like, mom, you got like bald spots on the top of your head. And that all filled in once I started increasing my mineral intake through having big salads. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Okay. Some of the tips I talk about. Amazing. Uh, Karen, I have a question about um, how many Woodstocks have you been to? I've been to all of them. Oh, really? All 11. No way. Wow. Yes. The first year we were actually in Woodstock and it was a beautiful, beautiful place. But the second year we went from like, I don't know, something like 250 to like 700 people. And we couldn't fit everybody at that retreat center. So we had to change the location. But because Woodstock is such a notable name, um, we kept the the word Woodstock and it really does fit the Woodstock because it's it's a dynamic festival it deserves a really prominent name yeah in Florida we're gonna have it in Florida and still gonna be Woodstock Fruit <laughs> Festival um because yeah it's like Woodstock a movement first, we had the Woodstock Fruit Festival in Hawaii one year oh yeah that's right and you went I brought my whole family wow I know a lot of people are commenting. Somebody said, uh, Karen for president. Um, <laughs> you need to be the first female president. Um, so basically, um, people want to know, okay, if you had to choose, was there one year that like stood out as a, like, as your favorite year since you've been to all 11, which is incredible? Hmm. You know, that... There, every year was just so, so special. Um, it's really hard to say. Every year had different, different people. I mean, some of the people come back and we have a lot of regulars. Um, I know that many of the speakers have stuck, like many of the speakers are the same. But um, we, we have some new speakers every year. So there's always a different dynamic 
and every year is just uh, it's just amazing and i just love every single person that i meet i always even though i do a lot of talks i always make time to hang out with people so uh, i eat meals with with people who i just meet or i go to the i try to go this year i didn't get to but i try to go to the getting to know you games oh, yeah. every year and I really loved, like at the beginning, they didn't have that. Once they did start introducing those getting to know you games, I felt like people warmed up a lot more quickly. Um, and, and that really made for the week. So yeah, that's, that's one thing I would say that since those getting to know you games started, that was really a great way for people to come in. Cause there's, there, there are people who come in and don't know anybody. Yeah. And, or there's, there's some people who do come with health challenges and want help and want to meet a lot of people um, initially and see, you know, who's, who's, um, who the speakers are. And so, you know, I really do like it also when the speakers go to those things and really connect with everybody. Oh yeah, like a lot of people. Okay, so I didn't go, Karen, for five years. I knew about it for five years, but I was scared to go alone. I didn't know that when you go to Woodstock, this is where your family is. This is where your tribe is. And what Karen said, this is the perfect word. You said utopia. That is the word. And just imagine a place where everybody is so nice and so positive and so caring and everyone just wants to help. Like we have, okay, so I've been running it for a few years now. And we have people that attend, like they, they pay to be there and they come early just to help. And I'm just like, what other event? No other event on earth, Karen, has this. And I'm just like, wait, you're not a volunteer, you're an attendee? And they're like, yeah, how can I help? And I'm just like, what? Okay, get to work. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And uh, so I've been a part of a bunch of different events, but this is the only one that has attendees that want to help. I get emails all the time. Can I come early to help? crazy That's so what you said so it's cool. the people the people are so nice and so you don't have to be afraid to go alone and we will have more updates on the exact dates and the exact locations this year we're looking at some really beautiful exciting locations so we'll keep you posted karen and everyone but um hey i want to yeah, say you know, the first year that my husband went all he kept saying is everybody's smiling here Everybody is like so happy. He just had never seen a place where everybody was just like in bliss the whole week. Yeah. High vibe. Oh, don't like, want to end. Yeah. No. When it, the last day is the saddest day of your life, you know, because you're coming back to reality. And like, just imagine people that are like eating in accordance to nature, feeling good, wanting to help, being positive, and just like, you know, you are what you eat. And so if you eat healthy food, you're going to feel good in a good mood. You know, Ted Card, he always, he taught me uh, food equals mood, you know? And like, it's true. Everybody's in a great mood and people are hugging. Like, I was so scared to go, Karen. And finally, I convinced my best friend to go with me. So we went. But then two years later, I had to go by myself. And I was so scared. And guess what? That year that I went by myself, guys, it changed my life. Changed your life. It changed my life. I met my business partner. I met a roommate there. I met guys you gotta go if you go alone it's even better because you will be open to meeting all the amazing people that's so, the best way actually absolutely and i was so afraid but okay so now um karen i want to know oh we have some more questions they're gonna kill me if i don't ask you these questions okay <laughs> is it healthy for someone with a fatty liver to be fruitarian parentheses more glucose intake yeah that's a good question it is not about the fruit I can tell you that very clearly. And I've worked with a lot of people with diabetes. It is not about the fruit. It's about the fat. When the fat is clogging up your bloodstream and your cells, the glucose that you need for energy from those simple carbohydrates cannot get through to the cells because that fat is clogging up the bloodstream and it's taking over the cells so that the glucose cannot get in there. It's that simple. So when you reduce your fat, take out the oil, take out all the saturated fat from the animal food, 
First of all, they have their own hormones. They have their own bacteria. They are a completely different species. We don't want any of their flesh and their saturated fat in our tissues. Once you do that, you don't have to be concerned anymore. Fruit does not cause fatty liver. I have seen this over and over and over again. We need to eat fruit. Fruit has significant amounts of vitamins. People who eat fruit have higher energy. If you don't eat fruit, your energy is lower. And if you're you not going to be cute either. Energy. No, sorry. What was that? And if you don't eat fruit, you're not going to be cute. That's just the facts. <laughs> You're not gonna look like Karen. You're not gonna look like Karen if you're not eating fruit. Okay, sorry, Karen. I had to. I had to point that out. <laughs> all that I want to say is that I continue all of these years to be super excited about this, only because it works. I wouldn't do it if it didn't work. I've been doing it now for 28 years. I am getting close to 70 now, and I feel super energetic. I haven't had any menopause issues at all. I've never had a hot flash. I, I had insomnia when I was younger. Can you believe I had insomnia when I, was in, when I was 40? And now in my late 60s, I have no insomnia. I sleep like a baby. Wow. And that all has to do with what I eat. So I know some people tell me, oh, well, I sleep and I eat all this other stuff. Okay, but what are your other health issues? So maybe not everybody has the same things. But I can just tell you that this way of eating, it gives you energy. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I stick with it is because as I'm getting older, I want to continue to do everything that I want to do. I, I, I want to travel. I want to, I want to meet new people. I want to see the world. I want to, um, I want to speak. I want to have the energy to get out there and still speak. I want to be able to do all those talks at the Woodstock Fruit Festival and to motivate people and to have energy to spend a lot of time talking to people because there's so many people out there who need this information. And the only way I can do that is eating this high vibration food. Yeah, and you do a lot of talks. I think you did the most of any speaker because I was I did the schedule last year, guys, and Karen, I'm pretty sure you did 10 total talks, right? I did two food demos and t and eight talks, I think. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a lot for like I couldn't do that. Like like that, that was intense and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it when you told me your schedule that you wanted. I was like, okay, she must be super healthy. No, because <laughs> like, I mean, and then the demos were amazing. That was the most popular thing last year, your demos. And so um, guys, if you want Karen to uncook for you, you got to come to Woodstock, okay? She makes the best. One was the key lime. And what was the other one? Um, let's see, this one I did the key lime tart, and then the other one I did banana nice cream with a variety of sauces. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I didn't get that. Everybody goes yes. crazy over my chocolate mousse sauce. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Okay, we got people that say they want to marry you. <laughs> Karen's married, right? Let's just calm down. And Let's calm down. Let's calm down here, okay? <laughs> okay, everyone calm down. Karen married. Um, but, but I love friends and I love followers. And if you tell me that you were on this event, I'll follow you right back. Yeah. Go follow Karen guys. If you're not following her, she is amazing living proof of what is possible because I know so many women come to me and they ask me what can, um, they do to like alleviate the symptoms of menopause. And I just send them to you. I just send them. I always say, go follow Karen because she's been doing it and she's proof. That you don't have to suffer. You weren't born to suffer, guys. Like, what Karen will help you guide you into the perfect way for you to live and eat so you don't have to deal with those things that is not supposed to be happening, right, Karen? Like, you're not supposed to feel um, hot flashes. Not feel horrible going into menopause. 
you're not supposed to have thyroid issues. The thyroid is a very sensitive gland, but you're not supposed to have problems with it. Um, you're not supposed to have visceral fat around the middle. You're, you're not. Uh, you're, you're not, you're supposed to sleep well, you're supposed to have vibrant energy, you're not supposed to have um, joint problems as you get older, you're just not. You're not supposed to have fibroids, none of that. You're supposed to be vibrantly healthy. This is your birthright. I truly believe it. And that's from somebody who had issues when she was younger, because I had cystic acne for like 27 years. Um, I had IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. I had terrible menstrual issues when I was young. I would have terrible cramps. I had to take off from, from work every month around the time of my period. I had such a heavy flow. I was so sick with cramps, terrible pains. I was in bed. And now, going into the menopause years, nothing, nothing. It's supposed to get worse, but no, it gets better when you change your diet and your lifestyle. It just improves. So you can have all of those things. You can have everything that you want. Yeah, you mentioned fibroids, how that's not normal. Uh, somebody actually asked about that. Um, is there any specific foods that you recommend to people? What, would, what do you recommend for anybody that's suffering from fibroid issues? Well, one thing that I want to highly recommend for anyone who has fish, in their diet is to get that fish out. Fish has heavy metals, especially mercury, which causes fibroids. You want to get the fish out. That'll be number one. And then as you go more and more to a healthy, whole plant, raw food lifestyle, you're going to start seeing the changes. You're going to start seeing fibroids shrink. Because I've worked with people with fibroids, and that's what I see that they shrink. Um, and, you know, I, I also, I have, I do have a Facebook group called Plant Foods Weight Loss, Hormonal and Gut Health. And we talk about these topics in there. So anybody who wants, it's a free group. Anybody who wants to join can, can come onto that group and, and join the group. Plant Foods Weight Loss, Hormonal and Gut Health. I know it's a long name. I might just change it to women's hormonal health. Um, but we, um, we've talked about the fibroids in that group. And there's so much that you can do just by changing your food and going to whole fresh plant foods. All the whole fresh plant foods are going to be nourishing. And, and make sure that you give up the animal food. And especially if you haven't yet, start with fish if you have fibroids. Really good tip. Yeah, because you know, a lot of people think that fish is a health food, brain food. Wild, it's, that's, it's wild, right, Karen? No, and there's no fish worldwide that isn't loaded with mercury. So like, you know, everybody's saying, oh, but I eat wild caught right. fish. I don't care if it's wild caught, Alaskan, top of the line, super expensive fish. It has mercury. Yeah. It, it's going to cause fibroids and other health issues. One of the moms I worked with whose son, um, she came to me with her son with autism. Um, as we were working together, she told me, she said, Karen, I intuitively know that the reason that my son has autism is because of the amount of fish I ate during my pregnancy. Wow. Wow. Second two children, no autism. And so with a lot of families where there's autism in the family, where the first child and the second child, and sometimes then the third child, they all have autism. I've seen some of it be related to the food um, where the, you know, where there was a lot of fish, especially in the diet um, or heavy metals from somewhere because there's different sources of heavy metals that need to be looked into. Wow, you know what? Thank you so much for doing everything you do because people still don't know this. And I know in our community, we're like, wait, who doesn't know this? But like, there's people on this live right now that are saying, wow, what? I didn't know this. 
They didn't know that fish wasn't a health food. And it's amazing. And that's why, and I know that that is a big reason why you eat this way. So you have the energy to do these talks, to do these lives, to go around the world and inspire people and tell them the truth. And Tessa, Tessa said, what's up, truth lover? Truth lover is an amazing Woodstock. He's been to every Woodstock too. And so Tessa, she said she used to force she has to, she used to force herself to eat fish because her grandpa and grandma told her that that's how she would become smart by eating fish. Meanwhile, fish causes Alzheimer's and all types of horrible things in the brain. And okay, Karen, we have uh, two more questions. I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna forget these. So somebody asked about fertility. Are there any helpful foods that you recommend for fertility? Um, I mean, the fruit. Fruit is fertility food, okay? Hold them up higher so everybody sees them clearly. You got, got a real one, too. We got a real one, too. <laughs> nice, nice. Fruit is the, the fruit goddess, you know? That's the, fruit of, that's the food of the fruit goddess and the fertility goddess. So you absolutely must eat fruit. That's, that's key. Um, but, you know, all of the plant foods have benefits for fertility. And I've seen a lot of people, a lot of women who couldn't get pregnant and change to, I've even seen people just go vegan and get pregnant. Wow. Um, but some, some people need to go further because there's a lot of vegan food that people are eating that's not healthy. Um, but I have even seen some some women go vegan and get pregnant. So just getting off of the acid forming animal food and processed food, which, you know, the processed food, a lot of it is loaded with MSG, monosodium glutamate, and that's an excitotoxin. And there is hidden labeling. Like some people might say, Karen, you're wrong. It doesn't say MSG. It doesn't have to say MSG. It's hidden. There's a lot of hidden labeling and all the packaged stuff. So you have to learn how to make your food nutritious and tasty just by taking those foods out because your taste buds will change and you will start to love the fresh whole plant foods and you will start to create healthy, simple, easily digestible recipes through um, making food creative. And when you create healthy recipes. I mean, Jeanette has recipes. I have recipes. It's, it's really pretty easy. There's so much available now. When I started Raw Vegan in 1994, there wasn't a whole lot available. And I had to find my way. But you don't have to find your way. It's super easy. Um, like right now, like we're both in the plant-based bundle. Oh, you're in it? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Wait, so we yeah. have to do a live together about it. Definitely. There's so many, Karen, there's so many books in this bundle. I can't, I it's can't believe it. 200. Guys, I have the Raw Vegan Beauty book. What book is, what book of yours is in there? My book, um, The Hormone Boost Plan, um, and the subtitle is Raw Plant Foods, uh, raw, raw, raw Plant Foods Weight Loss, hormonal and gut health. It's kind of like the name of my Facebook group. Oh my gosh. Um, but I put a lot of it into the ebook and it's also loaded with some of my favorite recipes. And um, yeah, I also have like a lot of recipes on my website um, at superhealthychildren.com. I have my books at superhealthychildren.com. And I have information also on feelfabulouswithfood.com. Uh, and one of the other things that you had asked me about with presentation, one of my other passions is that since 2015, I had started a course called the Vegan Coach Certification Course, where I help aspiring vegan coaches become highly qualified and I teach them coaching strategies, all of the coaching strategies that have worked for me. And also, um, in addition to coaching others, just how to get out there, how to become more visible. 
And so, um, and so that's also at feelfabulouswithfood.com. And yeah, and so um, guys, go to Karen's bio, click the link in her bio. It will take you to the bundle that we talked about. It will take you to her websites and all her recipes. And yeah, she's right. You gotta learn from other people's mistakes and find the recipes that satisfy you. And you know, the thing is not depriving yourself finding the alternatives to your favorite foods, right? Finding the recipes that Karen has already made for you. She's done all the work, guys. You don't have to do all the work. A lot of people think, Karen, they have to do everything. That's why they don't even start, you know? And you don't have to. You can, Karen, it's be your so guide. It's so easy today. It's so easy today. Yeah, it's so easy. Back in the day when we went raw, you know, we were on our own. There was no Absolutely. raw food romance when I, was, yeah. when I went raw. And then, how long have you been raw vegan? 2011 so it's almost 12 years now wow. and there was no raw food romance I didn't have the dips and dressings uh, <laughs> recipe ebook I had to make disgusting dressings on my own and waste <laughs> you know one time I made a smoothie Karen and it was so gross but I drank it because it, it was like $20 worth of ingredients I had to you know coconut meat and spirulina and all the things and I wasn't gonna waste that money but now we have all these amazing content creators that are raw that are healthy, that are making these amazing recipes. And so, yes, Karen is one of the best on earth. And yeah, okay, we're gonna wrap this up. I just have one more question that I'm gonna choose from. Um, Karen, is there anything that you would like to share, any message you would like to share to people as far as, um, well, you talked about the bundle, you're in the bundle. So guys, go check out the bundle. And um, can you just tell everyone some type of inspiration for the holidays because obviously Thanksgiving is coming up in a few days. And how, what would you recommend to people that want to stay healthy during Thanksgiving? I'm so glad you asked that, Jeanette. Right. Um, because, and, and I was just thinking, wow, like we didn't talk about the social, the social yeah. thing. So that's a fabulous question. Um, I would first and foremost recommend um, not losing it. Like if you're already like focused on self care and your and your health, um, really like I used to get really stressed out with people um, because you know people said things to me like, "Oh, why do you have to eat this way?" or um, "Why can't you just join us? Why do you have to?" practice deprivation and you know sometimes even family members um, like extended family members would make those kinds of comments and I would get very upset I would get hurt I would sometimes go inwards and just sit there and not really communicate because I felt like what I had to say maybe didn't matter but I would say be a shining light be a shining light and for those of you who are coming towards this path Use the holidays as a real like test for yourself to see if you can add in all these healthy things. The more fruits and veggies that you add in during the holidays, the healthier you are going to feel. And I would also say I would love to connect with you. If you want to get my, I have a little free ebook on my um, site, superhealthychildren.com. It's a fun raw food finger foods ebook that you could like foods you can hold in your hand. Um, oh, and it's just fun, super simple things that aren't like they're, they're almost, they're so easy. They're almost not recipes. Um, but I would say like try the pizzettes. Those are really, really tasty. Um, and bring some of like these kinds of treats to a holiday event, share them. You'll be surprised like how people love these things. If you want my key lime tart, I make that every single year for the holidays. It blew away people at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. It blows away people on the holidays. So that's how I get by these days. I bring delicious food that I know even the mainstream is going to like. So those people maybe who said things to me before now they're saying, wow, Karen, you make some really tasty stuff. Yeah, you're going to uh, you're gonna make that pie, right, Karen? You're bringing that pie, right? <laughs> Karen, I have Absolutely. a question. Did people call you a fanatic by any chance? Oh, all the time. Oh, they did. 
Okay. And they still do. Some people <laughs> still do. But they always expected that I was going to go back. They said, oh, we'll give you a couple years, a couple more years. 28 years now, they don't say that I'm going back anymore. Yeah, now they're just like, this is Karen. <laughs> you know, like, that's the thing. When you set your standards and you set your boundaries, yeah, for the few years, I mean, guys, I was called a fanatic. That's why I asked Karen, because my family, they said I was crazy, I was obsessed, and I was a fanatic. I couldn't let loose, okay? And um, I heard that for, like, nine years. <laughs> and then on the on the stop. tenth year, they stopped. Now, now they're just like Jeanette. You're bringing uh, persimmons, right? You're bringing persimmons <laughs> to because now I don't make the like Karen's key lime pie was the highlight of Woodstock for sure. The Musan King durian and Karen's key lime pie. <laughs> These are the two things that I remember the most. Oh, and the seeded watermelon. Those are three things. Three things. But you know how I feel about watermelon. Okay, yeah. but um, yeah, the key lime pie was so good. She made these little tarts. You can make them little. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. And the and people it's... in the kitchen at the Woodstock Fruit Festival are like geniuses. They know how to get things done quickly and they helped me to make those little ones. And they even took the, t the filling and they put it like into like little bags and they squeezed it out. So it made little, like those little swirly tops on it. It's just going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I'm telling you, everybody, if you haven't been there, it will light up your life. It will change your life forever. Oh, yeah. Karen, I'm in Miami now because of the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I met my roommate there, and she was like, why don't you come live with me? And I was like, I can't afford to move. And she was like, oh, you can come for free. Like, it was just, it was just craziness. It was just the universe. <laughs> aligns when you put yourself in a position to be surrounded by these beautiful amazing beings you get inspired and the universe has plans for you that you don't even know are happening when you put yourself but you got to make the first move you got to take the step i'm telling you karen listen karen's been to all 11 that is the oh that is incredible no wonder she's so beautiful and vibrant well i've alive. loved everyone yeah yeah, I loved everyone. And that's why when he asked me which one there, every single one has awesome. been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Wow. So that's why I'm just telling everybody you don't want to miss it. And, you know, I, I hope you can take in as many people in Florida as we did in New York. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But we got a spot for you, Karen. So don't worry. <laughs> I would not miss it. I would never. I'm ever so miss it. excited. I'm so excited to hang out with you and get more time to know you and go to your talks. And you came to one of mine, which was like one of the biggest honors of my life. Seriously, Karen, I look up to you so much and you've taught me a lot. And um, I just really love people like you that are not afraid to speak your truth and stand up for what's right. And I just really, uh, that's really inspiring to me. And just thank you so much for everything you do, Karen. Thank you, Jeanette. And I just also want to say that I love young people like you who are conscious and who question. Because that's the key here, everybody, is questioning. Questioning what we have been indoctrinated to and questioning what recommendations are in the mainstream and if they're serving you or not. And if they're not serving you, then you have to try something very, very different. And this very different way of living can create health and happiness. And that's really, what else do we want in our life? And well, we, we do want community as well. And it brings community with it also. When I first started, there wasn't as much community, but the community has grown so beautifully over the past couple of decades. Well, I've been raw for almost three decades and it has gradually grown. And it's, it's all over the place now. So now it's, now it's easy for you. Take advantage. Oh, yeah. So true. Thank you so much, Karen. You're amazing. I want to do a live with you next week. So we'll talk and I'll try not to mess up oh, the and time. I just, I just also wanted to say that anybody who follows me at Super Healthy Raw and lets me know that they were here, I will follow you right back. And if you do want my key lime tart, or if you want my, um, my other recipes, well, my other recipes I told you at superhealthychildren.com, you could get those. And if you want the key lime tart, 
you can just email me at Karen at Feel Fabulous with Food, and I'll send it right over to you. Thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything you do. And we will see you at the Woodstock Food Festival. For yeah, sure. thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for telling people how to get the right with fruit. <laughs> thank you so much, Karen. You know, you know, we love it. We got to eat fruit if we want to stay cute. We got to do it. Right. It I love goes you, Karen. together. <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being here. Bye, guys. Bye, Karen. Bye.